Hey, welcome. In this video, I'm going to briefly talk about NoSQL database and MySQL database. If you are coming from the world of PHP and MySQL, and I'm sure most people came from that world, and if you have coded in a relational database, this video is going to help you understand NoSQL database. By NoSQL, I mean in this video series, we are going to use the Firebase, the their cloud service like the Fire, Firestore. So Firestore is a NoSQL database, so you should understand how it works and what is the difference between them. So this is of course a brief video which, which is related to this series that we are going to build the e-commerce website. If you are going to go to in depth about uh, Firestore and NoSQL database, I recommend you watching this uh, the Firestore the the Firebase database for SQL developers. It is by the Firebase channel here. I will give you the link in the description of the video so you can watch briefly. This is a full playlist as well as the Firestore get to know Cloud Firestore. And this is these two playlists are very important to know uh, because they will explain everything about Firestore and the difference between Fire uh, Firestore or NoSQL database as well as the uh, the SQL database. So let's start. If you come to the PHP MyAdmin here, here is a SQL structure. This is called uh, the SQL database. SQL database, it is like you have a table. Let's say for example, you have an events table and inside the table you have row and row is going to have every row that you can see here. It has a specific rule which we call a schema and a schema is going to limit user from entering invalid data to the database. For example, the title for the event is a workshop or variable character and it is 191 character. This is restricted to this one. And the description is medium text and the starting, the start of the event is a date. So these are all the restrictions they put in the database if you have ever coded in SQL. But if you take a look at the Firestore, they have a different approach. They do not have any table. Instead of table, in Firestore, they have something called collection. And inside collection, they have something called document. So compare document with a row. It is going to contain the information you want to store. And that document does not have any requirement for storing the data. Though we have something called uh, security rule for the database, for, the, for our database here. That is what you can apply and that is how you can limit user from entering wrong information into database. It's still, if you do not to put any security rule, it is going to accept any type of data. If you pass any string, it will be an a string. If you pass a date time, it will be stored as a date time and for other types of data also. So let's create our Firestore database and see how it is going to work. Here in the database tab of the Fire, Firebase, I'm going to click on the create. Once you start this one, try to do the test mode. The test mode is going to give you a lot of flexibility. If you go to the start with lock mode, most of the feature is not going to work. If you are uh, writing your code in in your view application, that's why you are going to, with the test mode. But for production, of course, you are going to lock it and you are going to limit it. If you are in the test mode, anyone can read and write in your database. If you go to the lock mode, this is where you write your security rule. So that is wha what we will discuss in the future video. For now, we will go in the test mode and it does not have any security for now. I will click enable and it will take a while to set up that. Now you are in the Fire Firestore dashboard and here is where you can create, create your collection in the data tab here, as well as you have the rules where you can write your uh, security rule uh, which we will discuss in the future do you have indices you have usage usage is uh, going to display uh, some graph about your database and how much of it has been used uh, i will come to the data tab for now and here is where you can add your collection inside collection you can have your document and if i click on the, this one it is going to ac accept a uh, name let's say the example of events and you can create on the next and now once you uh, created your uh, event document the event collection here now you can have is you can have your document here it is going to 
generate an auto ID for your document which you can store here if you click on the auto generate and here is the ID for your document inside the document you can have all your fields here let's say an event has a title and now here is you can store you can write you the data type if I said that you don't have to write the data type it is correct like if we come to our view application later I'm going to pass an array of data to the file store and those array of data will be different like it has date is it has title which is a string and it might have number and when I give the data I am not going to specify where should it store it is automatically storing that uh, with the structure of the array which we passed and it will give the type by default that's why if you are not uh, writing uh, the type here it's okay but you can write the default value here let's say first event here and then you can add more fields here if you add more fields the good thing about uh, NoSQL database uh, the good thing is like uh, some of your table might have different data and some of them might not have that those data in the SQL here you have restriction if you do not put any data which is nullable or not it is going to give you an error so they say that this is nullable so you should have to write something here and if the null is equal to yes here you don't have to write, do that one if you have the data it will store it if you don't have it it will not force you but there are some security rules that you can put for the user to require them to enter the information but from this database point it is not going to give you any error so this is how it is going to work and let's say it has a start and this is going to be a date and time so you can pick timestamp here and then you can store your information let's say this is going to be for today and you don't have to write the timing so that's it and you come here click save it will create your collection here the collection even as well as your first document inside that one so here is the example we have done here and you can edit it delete it anything you want and the order is the order does not matter here so they do not put the order but later I will show you how you can order your document and so if you check out the example here they have collection they have document and inside the document you can have another collection think of it as if you have a relational database you don't have any relationship here so that is the something else we will discuss in the future video for now think of it let's say you have a an object here and the object is going to have another object inside the other one so that is what is going to be the sub collection you can store here uh, all you have to know is the last point of the collection should be a document let's say you create a, a collection here now you give the ID for the collection and that collection must have a document to store the information that is the important point let's say even has user and you are going to store user information there and then a user will have a name and let's say this is the name and I will add some more field and let's say photo and let's store as a photo.png for now of course I will show you how you can upload file in the storage here file store and then you can uh, save the reference of that here in the future videos but for now if you check out here this is also uh, the user you have here this is also a document and this is going to be the collection oops we don't create the collection going to back back to this do mm, document and they are like inside each other so you have to understand the difference between collection and document collection is like a table and the document is going to be as like let's say a row for your data it is not like that but similar to that so i hope it has been informative for you if you have any question feel free to ask below the video and again if you are going to learn firestore more about this one feel free to watch this uh, playlist my goal is not just to teach you what I know and I'm going to show you some of the good references that helped me uh, when I was learning so that's why I share these resources with you also so that's it for this video thank you for watching